Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Speed Force Media Podcast, a weekly podcast where we recap our favorite comic book movie news of the week. And we're here every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can find us here on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, all that good stuff. My name is Eleanor. I'm Derek. And a couple of our topics today are Jason Momoa confirms he shot with two different Batman for Aquaman 2. And Invincible is getting a live-action movie, and this was confirmed. Stay tuned to hear more. How is everyone doing today, Derek? How's your day going? Oh, doing great. Got a lot of good news to talk about. Angela Bassett... Uh, got an Oscar nomination for Black Panther. Black Panther got five Oscar nominations. The Batman got three. So good, good, good for comic book movie genre day. Yeah. Good day. All righty, guys. So let's get into the first one. Jason Momoa confirms that for Aquaman 2, he shot with two different Batman. I know that we talked about this a couple weeks ago and that, you know, everyone kind of speculated that this was happening, but he actually confirmed it. So now it is real it's real sauce, guys. It's real tea. So there were two Batman, and if you didn't know, they were Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck. And we, I guess we all have to wait till the movie actually comes out before we can hear which one stays in the movie, because I've heard mixed rumors on that. Right. Because, yeah, I mean, he didn't confirm it's not Michael Keaton, it's not Ben Affleck. We don't know. We have no idea. It could be both. Maybe they just mushed them together into one super Batman. Who knows? That would be my guess. What do you think, Derek? <laughs> Honestly, I think it could be neither, which was also another one of the rumors over the last few months, is that just to avoid any sort of confusion or any sort of any sort of chance of giving DC fans false hope for seeing something that may never f- come down the pipeline. Like, having Ben Affleck's Batman in there would kind of insinuate that there's some sort of a future for his character reappearing. Same with Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, Michael Keaton's Batman being shot in there doesn't really surprise me, especially since around the Batgirl era, there was a lot of rumors that Michael Keaton's Batman was going to be the new Batman for the DCU moving forward. Remember that stage in the DC fandom timeline? I mean, I was excited for it, yeah. But I didn't want to see Ben Affleck go either wanted to see both sure well what i was hoping for was that okay if we have michael keaton as batman sometime batman when he gets into his 70s like michael keaton is he's gonna have to retire and then we're gonna get terry mcginnis so right. that's what i was hoping batman for. beyond yes but you know and they crushed our dreams things. on that one and who knows maybe they'll do those things in the future in if a... james gunn says he'll give us batman beyond i will forgive the grievances of the past i'll be like henry cavill who <laughs> <laughs> really well, I don't, I don't know, know if, if I'd be that far. Maybe I'd be like still like 10% mad, but I'd be like, okay, but you're giving us Terry McGinnis and no one's ever given us that. So fair. I'd be down. Right. I mean, with with Michael Keaton apparently not being in the future plans, with Ben Affleck apparently not being in the future plans, it does make you question whether or not either one of those actors will ever appear post Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom or if if either one of these actors even show up in the movie right that's what I was thinking it might be the for the last time it might be like here's Batman oh and he's dead wow I do remember when Ben Affleck finished his scenes for the Flash he said that he felt fulfilled and he felt like he had finally nailed the character and he had finally done the character right. And that he was really excited and that it was the last time. And that he wanted to move on to other things. He's got his own production company in the works. He wants to be a director. He wants to move on. Batman's not been the best experience for him. Kind of like Andrew times. Garfield with Amazing Spider-Man. It kind of broke his been heart, painful. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's been painful. So that's understandable. And for Michael Keaton, it seems like James Gunn obviously doesn't want to go with the older route. He wants to go younger from based off of their Superman. I don't know. Maybe maybe they will be bringing Michael Keaton. They haven't done anything that's told us otherwise. 
It's all speculation. And he's a spectacular actor, and he is a well beloved uh, Batman. I would say, at least in my mind, he is. I really liked his Batman. But really, I think this whole thing with Michael Keaton being in there at one minute, Ben Affleck being in there in another, I think that just is a perfect example of the state of Warner Brothers and DC before Warner Brothers Discovery came in and David Zaslav said, hey, we're going to have DC Studios and we're going to have people in charge with one vision, with one mindset, one goal moving forward. Before, it was like, ah, well, if The Flash does good and we reboot the universe, then Michael Keaton will be our Batman and Ben Affleck's will be written out, so maybe we should plan for Michael Keaton's being in there. But, oh, wait, well, Batgirl's not doing good, so, you know, very reactionary. Yeah. Not ever truly... And even with Love, they were being reactionary until they got their two people that were going to run the DCU in and, place. And, you know, I haven't agreed with everything that James Gunn and Peter Safran have did. Absolutely not. But at least they're not reactionary and they have a right, plan. Right, they're consistent. Yeah, they got a plan going in, in motion and going forward. And unfortunately, I don't think that plan is going to include Ben Affleck or Michael Keaton in their plans unless maybe, you know, 10 years down the, down the road they want to do some sort of crisis movie. That'd be great. I'd love to see that. And it doesn't have to be Crisis. It could be Kingdom Come. It could be Flashpoint, you know, a real Flashpoint. Um, it could be anything. But I don't necessarily... Like, if you're going to go under 50%, over over 50%, over under, okay, is a Batman, a Batman, going to appear in Aquaman and Lost Kingdom? I'm going to say under 50%. For me, it's just not believable because there's just been too many, like, snip, snap, snip, snap, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's like, Batman, no Batman. This Batman, this Batman. Old Batman, young Batman. Middle-aged Batman, no Batman. Like, so I'm just, at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to expect that Aquaman is Aquaman. And that moving forward, they've tweaked, especially with how long they've delayed Aquaman. I'm like, they must have done some tweaking in there. Maybe a couple of reshoots, taken some people out, you know, filled it in a little bit so that it will match, I think, going forward what the DCU is doing. Because I think it's also, isn't it the last movie to come out? I believe out? so. Or maybe Blue Beetle. Okay. It might be Blue Beetle. If, if Blue Beetle's part of the DCEU. They haven't confirmed Right. What timeline that set in. Right. So, I mean, for me, at least, I if what I'm remembering is correct, and feel free, anyone in the comments, connect, correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong. I feel like that Aquaman, which is in December of this year, is going to be the last one. So that could be your tie into the next DCU slate, or that Aquaman will finish up the DCEU timeline somehow. Either that or they might be finishing up the timeline with The Flash. I don't know. Like, I have two schools of thought. Either the Aquaman finishes up the timeline for the DCEU and then they reboot after that. Or The Flash ties up the DCEU in a nice little bow and restarts the universe. And then Blue Beetle and Aquaman will continue onward in the DCU. Which, for me, I have a hard time wrapping my head around Jason Momoa still being Aquaman with Henry Cavill not being Superman. But at least, you know, this is a great version of Aquaman and we can move forward with something that is familiar. Um, just trying to stay positive about it because it is hard to be positive right now. There is just so much negativity around it, you know, and there is so much sadness and grief and loss. Jason Momoa is feeling pretty damn positive. Right. So it's <laughs> like I'm just trying to feed He's gonna off He's going to get of... to be the face of two DC franchises right. moving forward. I'm trying to feed off of that positivity and hopefully whatever Jason Momoa, you know, soon it'll be announced, I'm sure, whatever Jason Momoa and uh, Peter Safran and James Gunn have planned out hopefully it's something good that will be good for the fans and i just hope that there's not too much backlash because yes i do agree that no henry cavill no one but i also at the same time think that you know at the same time not everyone should lose their job just because henry cavill lost his so it's it's hard but moving on guys we are moving into our next topic which is kevin feige says that comic book movies will never be unpopular he was asked about this by Variety, 
And he said, I didn't really understand the question because to me it was akin to saying after Gone with the Wind, well, how many more movies can be made off of novels? Do you think the audience will sour on movies being adapted from books? You would never ask that because an inherent understanding amongst most people is that a book can be anything. A novel can have any type of story whatsoever. So it all depends on what story you're translating. Non-comic readers don't understand that it's the same thing in comics. And I agree with that. I don't think that comics will ever be stale. Because there is, like Kevin Feige says, there's so much rich history there. 80 years worth of history for Marvel. So many stories they can go in and adapt. So many stories they can go in and create. They're still creating new comics and new stories to this day. So it's not just adapting the past. It's also going forward with new stuff and combining the two into something that the audiences can relate now and yet it can still be timeless. So I think there's definitely a market there and even with the dc comics there's you know you can go back to golden age superman and take some of those elements and some of the bronze age mix them together you have something that's timeless and that works for everyone pretty much and i think that with all comics you can constantly reboot them and retell the story even you can even retell the same stories over and over again in different ways look at how many ways we've had batman retold to us and we still (laughs) all go to the theater to see batman because spider-man yeah, because we see, like, a oh, dude in a suit with webs on it, I'm sold. Or dude Pretty with much. pointy ears and a cape and a Batmobile, I'm sold. Like, so I, For the most part. I definitely don't think that comic book genre will ever die down. I think once it finally got picked back up, people were feeling safe to embrace their inner nerd. And it's not just in the comic book realm, either. Now fantasy and anime have become a lot more popular, too. And it's become okay to be a fan of anime. When I was in high school, being a fan of anime was something that you could get stuff in a locker for. Oh, yeah. Oh, So it definitely. was not cool. And now I talk to high schoolers, you know, whenever I'm around them, and they're like, yeah, anime's awesome. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And they're like, bleach. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's from my time. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Like, excuse me. When did you get on on this? And I'm like, this is like, this is so cool. People are getting into things that they love and they're not afraid to show it anymore. And comic book movies is just one of those things. Right. And comic books, I feel like comic book movies opened the door for that. They opened the floodgate. It's cool to like Lord of the Rings now. It's cool to like fantasy stuff. It's cool to like World of Warcraft. It's cool to like RuneScape and all of these nerdy things that people didn't used to love. Video games. Like, remember when back in our day, when, yeah, because we're old. Um, (laughs) video gaming was not cool. It was like a select group of kids that usually the kids with the rolling backpacks, you know what I'm talking about. They were the ones that were playing video games and watching anime. And now it's everyone. Or a lot of the times you get looked down upon. Right. It was like being lazy or unintelligent. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, now it's cool to read, to watch things, to create, to play video games and i think it's awesome that society is embracing people's passions more and more instead of stuffing them down because i mean there's lots of things that you get told you're it's a shameful to be you know a fan of and comic book movies and comic books in general used to be one of those things it's like oh you have the spider-man bed sheets and you everyone thinks you wet the bed and you're not cool and it's like now it's like oh you like spider-man well now you're part of the bros Let's all go watch Spider-Man together. Even things like Star Wars have, like, they're timeless always, you know, of course, and people have always loved Star Wars. But sometimes you'd get the runaround for liking Star Wars, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, anything, like, super sci-fi like that. It was considered one of the nerd things. And now it's cool to like those things, and it's okay. At least it's a little bit more acceptable to most people. You're still obviously going to run into... Your, I don't want to say haters, but the people that just are really strongly feel negative against anything that's not right based on a true story, you know. But it's it's like the spaghetti western. It's like crime thriller, or gangster movies, you know. There's or slasher movies. There's times in decades and decades where they are the most popular genre. They right. are the highest grossing movies of the box office. And in a lot of ways, especially nowadays, they were helping keep the theaters open and getting butts and seats. 
selling right. tickets. Imagine the theaters without having No Way Home without, to save them. Yeah, without No Way Home, without Multiverse of Madness, despite it not being as good as I was hoping, still made a lot of money. You got the like Batman. you said, you got a lot of butts and seats. Right. Uh, and of course, you did have like Top Gun Maverick, which Avatar. was a big one. Uh, and these movies are not just like these movies are not going to make two, three billion dollars plus worldwide at the box office every year for the rest of mankind, obviously. And there's eventually going to be years. We talked about it last week that next year we might have a year where there's no DC films in theaters. And that'd be a first for a little while. There may be years in the future, 10 years, 20 years from now, or maybe less, maybe a lot less than that, where there's no years or no comic book movies coming out in a year or multiple years with no comic book movies coming out. I think we're a ways off from that. But even when it does get here, you're still going to have a hell of a lot of things that you can rewatch for the first time because there's so much content now being pumped out all at once that a lot of us are probably just watching it once saying, eh, it's okay, throwing it off to the side when maybe two, three years from now we see the stuff that's coming out that we're like, holy crap, phase four looks like gold. Who knows? I'm not saying that's where it's going. Hopefully not. I think... Bob Iger being at Disney is definitely going to help out with that. But if you look at the 80s, the 90s, there wasn't a whole hell of a lot of comic book movies that were coming out. And yet, you still had a couple of today's best comic book movies come out in that time. So even if 10 years from now we're not getting four comic book movies a year and we're only getting one every two or three, I think there's still going to be plenty of good comic book movies to come in the future and i think kevin feige is absolutely right moving on to our third topic invincible is getting a live action movie and this was confirmed by robert kirkman he's the creator of the animated series if you didn't know and he did say that they were getting an anime a um excuse me live action movie here soon and he said we're very much still working on that Sometimes movies take a bit longer. I think it's safe to say, if anything, the show has just helped that immensely. People are very excited about that movie potential at Universal, so we're riding that excitement and trying to push things forward as quickly as possible. And with that teaser coming out for season two, which I thought was brilliantly it funny, was awesome. that um, I would be excited to see a live action. Like, it would be amazing, especially if they get, like... Oh, man, I always mess up his name. I always say J.K. Simmons. Thank you. (laughs) You get J.K. Simmons live action. I would die. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like Omni-Man is a little younger than J.K. Simmons. He's like over a thousand years old. But he looks younger than (laughs) J.K. Simmons. I mean, yeah, and plus he's in incredible shape. Um, but J.K. Simmons is as well, so you could be onto something, Eleanor. I know. That I don't know. Would be what do you guys amazing. think? Do you think J.K. Simmons could pull it off physically in today's live action? Oh, I, I definitely think so. J.K. Simmons is magical, so I think he, I think he can do it. Um, but I would also be excited to see. I can't remember who's the guy who Stephen played Stephen Yen. Yes, he's awesome too. So I'd be excited to see all of them, honestly. Like, because you see the animation, you can see, like, in your head, you're like, okay, I can kind of picture the actors behind this, but you also just get that feeling right. from them. And I'm like, this show is just so brilliant and funny and gory and violent. And it's kind of like The Boys, but it's different enough that it feels completely different right it has a completely different storyline it feels different they've talked about even that they might maybe do different storylines that the comics aren't doing so i'm like they're gonna expand upon the story like the boys did that it makes me really excited and if universal picks up this movie then that's a big studio so this could be hella hyped this could be you know big yeah it could be it isn't right now, but it definitely could be in the next several years. Invincible could be even bigger than The Boys. Maybe they look at what Amazon has done with The Boys and wants to do with The Boys. And like you said, they've got Universal backing them, which Universal is always looking for the next film franchise that they can pump out. Now they've got their hands on a comic book film franchise, which they're like, hey, it's not DC or Marvel, but we got characters that are just as powerful. Not to mention... 
Am I the only one that gets a little bit of Young Justice vibes from uh, Invincible? Maybe it's yeah. just the team aspects. Maybe it's something to do with the animation. The animation is obviously a lot better in Invincible. It's got a lot more money put into it. And I definitely also get a little bit of Man of Steel vibes. Maybe it's just the flying scenes or the action scenes, specifically with Omni-Man. And being able to showcase his power and his full capabilities in the live action would probably cost a lot of money, so they would need a bigger studio like Universal to step in. Amazon maybe would do it. They've done a great job with Am- uh, with the boys, excuse me. But with Universal, I think there's a lot of potential there. I don't know if I would like it as much as I do the animated series in a live action format where it's not as big of a budget. It all matters on the story that they want to tell. The Boys doesn't need $200 million an episode or a season because it's got such a great story and has great characters that are captivating and pull you in. It's got great character development. It's obviously very shocking and surprising and develops the humor very well. If the Invincible movie can do something like that, but with a smaller budget, if they don't, if they're not able to put $200 million into it, then I would still love that. I'm not saying it needs $200 million, But in, to be able to showcase the abilities and the full capabilities of characters like Omniman and Invincible and everybody else on the team, they would have to either be very creative, like the guys behind Deadpool with, the, I think, $70 million budget. Shazam did it with, like, a $90 million budget. Um Brightburn, which obviously is a horror movie, so a lot of the times they were using what you don't see against you to freak you out. But you did definitely feel the full powers of Brandon in that movie. So whether or not they go high budget, low budget, either way, it all just depends on how they write it. And I'm really excited to see what they do with it because the writing for Invincible has been great. So if they can pull any of the same people over into that show or into the movie, excuse me, I'm all bored for it. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below as we always love to hear your perspective and your thoughts. But that'll do it for us today, guys. What do you think of everything that we have covered today? Do you think that we're going to get any Batman with Jason Momoa's newest Aquaman movie? What do you think of Kevin Feige's comments about comic book movies? Are you excited to see an Invincible live action movie? If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe and like. It does help us out greatly. and We really appreciate it. If you're listening on an audio-only format on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or any other podcasting service, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe for more content. It does help us find more listeners like you, and we greatly appreciate it. That'll do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much, and remember to iron your capes.